In this video, we're gonna talk about the dark side of placebo and how I'm using this knowledge to help myself increase resilience and avoid future flare-ups of chronic pain. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So you're probably familiar with the concept of placebo. And a lot of times this has a negative connotation because what people think it means is that there's actually no effect from the intervention or treatment or movement in this case. And that's actually not what this means. It just means that the actual effect that's being experienced is due to what our expectations and beliefs about that thing are. So in the context of movement, the way that this works is if we expect to have a positive effect from a certain movement or intervention or treatment, then we're likely to have a positive physiological response. Now, unfortunately, this also means that on the flip side, there's a darker side to placebo called non-SIBO or nocebo, where we have a negative expectation of what we're going to be feeling. And then when we go to do that activity, we're more likely to have a negative physiological reaction. Now, in the context of chronic pain, this means with certain activities, we're going to be more likely to experience pain and symptoms, even when there's no structural threat. And so the way this usually plays out is we hear something from a healthcare professional on social media, family member, and then we get afraid of doing a certain movement or a certain activity because we're expecting it to have some sort of a negative physiological effect. And unfortunately, because we believe this, the brain actually learns to predict symptoms by a process known as predictive coding. This is actually a pretty complex topic that we're gonna be breaking down in depth inside my new group movement coaching program. So if you're interested in learning more, go down to the description and click the link to apply. So the way that this plays out with pain is often we're avoiding a certain movement, we don't do it, and then any time that we do do it, we get pain and symptoms, then we start limiting ourselves, and then over time, we'll start adding more and more and more movements or activities to that list of not safe, and then next thing you know, we can't really do anything because we're expecting to feel pain and symptoms in all scenarios, and then we in fact do, and then we just continue that cycle, and so what we need to do in order to get unstuck from this cycle is actually begin to expose ourselves to these movements, positions, and activities, and get some evidence that we're not being harmed by being in them or doing them. And so this exposure type therapy needs to be progressive in nature, starting slowly in a less loaded position, using a lesser duration, and then gradually progressing up to longer durations of exposure, as well as higher degrees of loading. And now the secret here with getting results with this is not just putting yourself into those fearful positions and activities, but it's actually the way that you're paying attention to your experience while you're doing it, in addition to getting that dosing right. So when we're in that activity, as long as we've dosed it right, we need to increase our presence to get the optimal benefit. And so the way that we need to be paying attention in these scenarios is to be cognizant of what our emotions are, first of all, and then second of all, what we're feeling. And what I mean by feeling is the actual sensations in the body. And this is really a point of difficulty for most people because we wanna pay attention to the sensations in a raw data sort of way versus an interpretive kind of way. So for example, let's say I'm doing an activity that feels dangerous to me and I feel an unpleasant sensation. If I'm feeling that unpleasant sensation, I could go down to the raw data level and feel it as tension and tingling and pressure or I could go to interpretation and say, oh my God, that's bad. That means this, I'm gonna be in pain, right? These are stories we're telling ourselves about what we're feeling, that's an interpretation, versus the raw sensory data, getting it without any sort of story behind it. So we need to make sure that we're increasing our presence so that we can be aware of emotions, but also the raw data of those physical sensations. So now we're gonna go through a couple of examples of things that I was afraid of doing, and I'm gonna show you how I'm progressing them in this gradual manner within my own training to increase my tolerance to them and exposure so that over time my brain predicts less pain and symptoms. Now these two movements for me that I heard that were not good to do were arching your back or extending your back and stretching your hamstrings. And these two often go together. They can be worked on simultaneously, and you'll see that in a second. But a point I wanna make here before we jump into the examples is that sometimes we hear something that says it's better to do X than Y in a specific context. And oftentimes this is true. So let's say I'm someone that likes to arch my back all the time, but I have an inability to round it. If I work on rounding my back, I'll have more options to pull from, and I'm gonna have a healthier movement system overall. But oftentimes what we hear when we're in pain in that scenario is that I'm in pain, the reason is because I'm extended. If I get into a more flexed position, I'm gonna feel better. And while this might be true in a certain scenario 
maybe an acute injury kind of scenario or when you have those really limited movement options. The wrong conclusion to draw in this scenario is that arching the back is dangerous and rounding the back is safe. And the correct conclusion to draw here is that right now I'm arching my back a lot. If I round out my movement options by learning to round my back, then I'm gonna have a healthier movement system. And overall, that should help me move and feel better. Okay, so with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into the examples. If you're finding value from this video so far, consider liking this video, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. All these things help the algorithm to help me help more people. So I said that the two movements that I was afraid of doing was arching my back into an extended position and stretching my hamstrings. So for me, I have a lot of experience with movement, and I've been lifting and out of pain for a while now, so I was able to go to a more aggressive variation here pretty much right off the bat. But what I'd encourage you to do if you have some movements you're afraid of doing is find a way to scale them down to the most regressed possible variation. So I'm gonna give you some examples of how you could do that with either of these two movements, and I'm gonna show you what I'm actually doing. So when it comes to both of these activities, I'm gonna find a way to get into the position with the minimum amount of load to start. So with the hamstring, what we're gonna do is lay on our backs, we're gonna get a band and then pull into a stretched position. We're gonna go for about a four out of 10 stretch, so not very intense and we're gonna hold it a short duration. But while we do it, what we need to do is increase our presence in that moment to then allow the brain to have an opportunity to update its sensory model to make better predictions about what we're feeling. If we go right away to thinking about, oh my God, this is dangerous, without actually realizing that that's what our thinking, then the brain's just gonna to default to its prior representation and make the same prediction of pain and symptoms. So the key here is regress the activity down, reduce the load, reduce the exposure time, but also to increase presence while doing it and make sure that we're really tuning into what we're feeling. So here I am, I have a pretty sturdy band here that's providing me a good amount of support. I'm gonna choke up so I have even more control. And for me, this is not a lot of hamstring stretch. So like I said, I had pretty good hamstring flexibility in the past, used to stretch my hamstrings a whole lot. So for me, this is not much of a stretch. This is about a four out of 10. So I would just hold this here for a period of about 20 to 30 seconds. And all we're doing here is improving tolerance to this position. And again, the emphasis is on being present to what I'm feeling. So I wanna notice if there's any anxiety, worry, fear, any of that present from an emotional standpoint or positive emotions. And I also wanna tune into the direct physical sensations without interpretation. So do I have tingling? Do I have pressure? Is there tension? Is there temperature? Can I sense all that without immediately going to a story about whether it's good or bad or what it means or what it's doing to my body or what the bones are or what the muscles are? Just let go of all the story attached to it and really just tune into what your actual experience is in the moment. So then you could relax, assess how you felt with that and then progress either doing some more volume or leaving it there for that day and coming back and doing a little bit more later on. Now, in terms of arching the back here, something like this position would be a great place to start. And if this is even too much, you might consider putting a pillow underneath the hips. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna push down with the elbows to arch this low back while I simultaneously think of letting my belly sink down into the table. And this is gonna arch that low back. And again, we're gonna get into this position a short duration, keeping the load really light here and just breathing through it, being present as we can to not only emotions, but also the raw sensations without any interpretation. All right, so those are some pretty unloaded positions, but to really increase resilience, we eventually wanna increase load. And so a great way that we can do that for those two specific positions we're talking about is by doing something like a hinge with emphasis on a little bit of extension in the spine. So a way to start to progress this would be to just get into a standing position get a little bit of an arch in the back so we can think about taking the back pockets and pulling them up to get a little bit of an anterior pelvic tilt and a little bit of lumbar extension. Then maintaining that, we can sit the hips back into a hinge. And from this position, we're getting a pretty good stretch in the hamstrings. And once again, we hold this here, really focusing on the raw data of what we're feeling as well as any emotions. We hold this for just a short duration, go to a range of motion that's comfortable, where we can tolerate the amount of stretch we're getting, I would start around a four or five out of 10 and then scale up from there. Now you can hold this statically or you can practice coming in and out of that position. Once again, just being present to what you're feeling. Now, once again, there's nothing magic or fancy here, 
but we're gonna add load as we become more tolerant. And I'm gonna go through those same cues I did a second ago, arching the low back, pulling that pelvis up by the back pockets, get a little bit of anterior pelvic tilt, as well as spinal extension. Then I'm gonna sit back into that position, get that little bit of a hamstring stretch while I'm emphasizing that arch in the low back. I'm gonna hold here, get a little bit of a stretch, then I can come up and rep this out like a deadlift, or I could do just holds here in the bottom position, working on getting those two motions. And so now once I'm loading and tolerating that well, I can scale up even a little bit more into something even a little bit more intense, like a split. And that's what I'm gonna be trying to scale back to because I used to be able to do this before I got afraid of those activities. So let's see what I can do today and keep checking in because I'm gonna get this split back. So as we can see here, this is a pretty intense amount of load over this front leg. I'm trying to get that back to arch a little bit here, making it easier to get the back leg straight. I'm digging down a little bit with that front heel, which is contracting the hamstring as it's lengthening. And I'm getting a lot of stretch here. Just trying to breathe through it and be present. Eventually I'm gonna be able to go back down, but for today, this is probably a good place to stop. Okay, so as you can see, we wanna progress slowly. We wanna increase presence so that we're paying attention in a way that can help us update that mental model and have new sensory expectations about what we're gonna feel. If you can do that, you're gonna increase resiliency, you're gonna have less pain and symptoms, and you're gonna have more freedom with how you're moving and feeling. So if you wanna jump into these topics in greater detail, go down to the description, click the link, and apply to be a member of my brand new group movement coaching program. We're gonna be starting up here in early July. As always, thanks a lot for watching this video, and until next time, peace.